join us and discover beautiful beaches, rugged landscapes, pretty towns, desolate mountain ranges that sweep down to stunning lakes, unique architecture, history and folklore, no shamrocks, no shillelaghs and definitely no shenanigans, just make it Ireland. Today we're looking at a company that is without doubt one of Ireland's business success stories of the last 40 years and yet also one of Ireland's great shames. It is of course Ryanair. As we look around here we can see a typical Ryanair chaotic departure gate. I've paid for priority boarding and yet there's no clear distinction between priority and regular boarding queues so taking advantage of what I've paid for is an impossibility. Nor are there any Ryanair staff overseeing a queuing system. I should also say at this point that there's some rough looking guys in the departure area here that look clearly under the influence of substances. At this point I was interested to see if they would be allowed to board. I obviously haven't filmed them here. You'll see the shocking outcome of that if you hold on to the end of this film and I urge you to do that. But Ryanair is an airline not without controversy, renowned for its undercutting of other airlines. Most of you will appreciate that Ryanair's prices are often the cheapest on the market but who ultimately pays for that? And is it a good airline to travel on? We'll see about that. In terms of how Ryanair keep their prices down, well you may be surprised to know that as much as 20% of the airline's income doesn't actually come from fares at all, but from what's known as ancillary revenue. These are charges for things like food and drinks, extra baggage, or the cost of choosing your seat. In fact, which magazine described the airline as the worst offender when it comes for charging for optional extras? In terms of cost, just try arriving at the airport and check in an extra bag, or having to have your boarding pass reissued because you've misled it. You'll know that Ryanair are a no-frills airline, but their no-frills approach has now degenerated in the menus printed with QR codes on the seat in front as are the safety instructions. Seats are unable to recline and have no pockets to put things in. They even tried to do away with the window blinds, but were not allowed by the Civil Aviation Authority. Other proposals they floated have been doing away with two of the toilets on their planes in order to fit six more seats in, allowing standing passengers, charging for using the toilets, something they've found since would be illegal, charging overweight passengers extra. I wonder where the threshold for that would be. And my favourite of all, having passengers carry their own check-in bags to the airplane. Their labour relations are equally shocking. They have a history of refusing to recognise unions and even sacked a Ryanair captain in 2011 for distributing union forms to cabin crew. He was awarded compensation by an employment tribunal. Again, a survey in which magazine found the airline was the UK's least liked short haul airline for the sixth year running. The Economist said the airline had a deserved reputation for nastiness and that the airline had become a byword for appalling customer service and jeering rudeness towards anyone or anything that gets in its way. Perhaps most telling of all is the story of Jane O'Keefe, who won a prize from the airline for being their millionth customer. Ryanair reneged on this and had to be taken to court where they had to pay compensation of 67,500 euros. And you'd think all of the shock and track record above would be devastating for any business. But in fact Ryanair and its CEO Michael O'Leary seem to thrive on the publicity it generates. As to say there's no such thing as bad publicity. Getting back to my own flight and how I got on. I already alluded earlier in the film to an impending disaster. In fact, one of the inebriated guys from the departure lounge was seated next to me on the plane, just my luck, with his colleagues seated all around. An incident kicked off with a couple objecting to sitting beside one of the particularly drunk guys which caused a lot of tension in the air. A couple had to vacate their seat 
in order to let the gentlemen sprawl out across three adjacent seats. Now the aircraft was full to capacity, so the couple had to stand with the air crew for the rest of the flight. I'm not easily intimidated, but a dangerous situation developed. It was a clear sign that things might degenerate into violence in mid-air. We can see here what happened as soon as we landed. Thankfully, the local police, dressed for the occasion as you can see, took control. Now it has to be said that Ryanair is enormously popular. I think by and large people tolerate being treated as cattle as long as they can afford to fly. I think though even if you're running a cheap low cost airline you have a basic obligation to be respectful to customers. Please let me know what you think about this topic. Should there be minimum service standards for low cost airlines? Are you happy to tolerate poor treatment as long as the cost of travel is low? Hit the like and subscribe button if this has been interesting or informative and I'll see you in the next Naked Ireland video.